Today we're going to make a bed. It's quite sturdy and it only requires four basic power tools to make it. The frame is made out of three quarter inch plywood and two by eights. I use my circular saw guided by a speed square to cut the two by eights. And for the long rip cuts along the plywood, I clamp down a trim board to guide the circular saw. I'll put a link to the PDF plans for this project in the description box below. I wanted to add in some built-in side tables, so for these pieces, I made some cuts in the plywood almost all the way through, but not quite. I stopped just about 22 inches from the end of the sheet of plywood. I then used my jigsaw for those last remaining cuts. You could use the jigsaw for all of these cuts, but I find that the circular saw cuts a little cleaner and straighter. For the long supports, I'm going to glue two layers of plywood together, but I want them offset by three inches. So I just temporarily screwed some three inch wide pieces of plywood, applied the glue, and then clamped the boards together. I then secured the pieces from the bottom with one and a quarter inch long finish screws. This three inch overlap is going to serve as a ledge for holding the slats that will support the mattress. I made two of these long supports and made sure that the nicer side of the plywood would end up facing up. Now I want this bed to be quite sturdy and an inch and a half of plywood isn't quite enough. So I then glued and screwed pieces of two by eight to the underside of the plywood. After evenly applying the glue, I used two and a half inch long deck screws to attach the two by eights. Now these two and a half inch screws are great for the one and a half inch thick parts of the plywood, but for the thinner part that's gonna serve as the ledge for the slats, I just used two inch screws screwing from the top down. This design could be modified in so many different ways. It's totally possible to use all two by lumber or all plywood. I just think that the combination between the two is an efficient way to make a nice strong platform. And don't forget to remove those temporary 3 inch wide spacers. I now have two long and super strong supports with built in side tables. These will be connected by cross supports and once again I'm going to use a combination of two layers of plywood reinforced by a 2 by 8. Now I'm going to glue all the pieces together because we're not going to be moving the bed too much. But if you wanted to make the bed easier to assemble and disassemble, you could use just screws for this part. I really like using these spring clamps. They're just about 99 cents each at Home Depot, and I always make sure I have about 30 or 40 of them with me. I cut the plywood cross supports so that they would overlap nicely with the ledge that I created for the slats. Once again, I used two and a half inch long deck screws to screw through the two by eights and into the two layers of plywood. I cut the two by eights so that they would overlap the plywood joints and add a lot of stability at the corners. Once the glue had fully cured, we flipped the frame over and now I'm going to trim the end at an angle. And that's because we're gonna use these really heavy duty steel brackets from Semi-Exact. These are based on a design from a previous project that I did and they support an angled headboard set to 30 degrees. This is really nice as a backrest for reading or working on a laptop in bed. I clamped down the trim board, set my circular saw blade to 30 degrees and cut through the two layers of plywood. Next up, I'm going to make the headboard itself. So I got another sheet of plywood, ripped it down the middle so that it was two feet wide, and then glued these two panels together. Once the glue had cured here, I clamped down my straight edge and trimmed the edge to 30 degrees. I'm using a brushless circular saw from Ryobi. It has a ton of power, especially for a battery powered circular saw, and it has no trouble going through two layers of plywood. I switched the blade back to 90 degrees and then trimmed the edge of the headboard so that it would line up perfectly with the ends of the side tables. I also trimmed the base of the bed's platform. If you want, you can use wood putty to fill in the cracks. I used an orbital sander to sand the edges of the plywood, first using 100 grit paper before working my way up to 150 grit. 
I also rounded over the edges to make them a little bit softer and cleaned up my cut lines that I made with the jigsaw. I then screwed on the legs from Semi-Exact. These are really heavy duty welded steel and I'm using ones that are powder coated with a white finish. But they come in a variety of different finishes so be sure to click on the link in the description box below to check out all their product options. This was an early prototype and some of the angles are a little bit tight so I used my right angle drill to drive in the screws. But for the next generation of brackets we're going to either move the holes out farther to the sides or add access holes to make this process easier. Now you could totally leave the sides of the 2x8s exposed but if you want to hide them just rip a piece of plywood and then cut the ends at 30 degrees. This will then serve as a skirt that you can screw on with finished screws. I cut these skirt boards with the angled ends to be two and three eighths of an inch wide, and then I cut a one and a half inch wide board to hide the two by eight at the foot of the bed. I then covered the heads of those screws with wood putty. I wanna be able to slide the bed around without damaging floors, so I use some adhesive stick-on felt pads on the steel brackets. This frame is super sturdy and it has zero flex in it. I sanded down the wood putty with 150 grit paper and then attached the headboard. I also drove screws through the underside of the bed's platform into the edge of the headboard itself. I applied a little bit more wood putty and did one last pass with the sander. Now I was ready to apply a finish, but first I used clean rags to wipe off all the dust. I then used clean, lint-free rags to apply a thick coat of Maker Brand Simple Finish. This is a low VOC plant-based finish that's fantastic. You just wipe on a really thick coat, let it sit for about 10 minutes, check to see if there's any dry spots and add a little bit more to those spots, let it sit another 10 minutes, and then use a clean rag and rub out all of the excess. The result is a really nice finish that brings out the color of the wood that doesn't off-gas volatile organic compounds or VOCs. We then added in some plywood slats and threw on the mattress. Now this is a full-size mattress, but the same design would work for a queen, although there'd be a little bit less of a perimeter ledge around the bed. The built-in side tables are excellent for a cup of coffee or for charging your iPhone, and these semi-exact legs are now available in a variety of different colors. I am working with Semi-Exact to create a variety of different products that make DIYing just a little bit easier. This bed was part of an entire bedroom set of furniture that can be made in a single weekend using just these basic power tools. Semi-Exact is not a sponsor, but I have invested in them because I really believe in American-made products, especially ones like this that are made out of recycled steel. So if you're interested in high quality, super durable, American made products using recycled steel, please support Semi-Exact. You could also make this bed without the side tables or even just use four of the base brackets to make an easy bed with no headboard. We'll be dropping the other videos for this bedroom set soon. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.